Sumela and the Magic Kemenje. Author, Dean Klimnu. Illustrator, Stefanos Eleftheriadis. A long, long time ago, long before the stories that we all know were first told, there was a little girl. She lived with her mother in a small wooden house near a stream at the roots of an enormous mountain that was as tall as the sky. That mountain was covered in a thick green forest with a canopy so dense that from below it looked like a carpet of the softest moss, just like the one that grew on the rocks around the little girl's house. The little girl wished she could step on the canopy and climb up the mountain the same way that she walked up on the moss because halfway up the slope, peeking through the trees and perched upon a cliff, there was a gleaming white monastery. Every day, along with the constant twittering of the birds, the little girl could hear snatches of chanting wafting down the mountain from the monastery. The wind blowing through the leaves of the trees would send whiffs of incense into her nostrils and just occasionally when the birds and the wind were still she thought she could hear ever so faintly peculiar buzzing sounds creating a melody so strange and beautiful she could barely describe it oh i wish i could go up the mountain the little girl sighed to her mother as she set down her washing basket next to the stream of course you do her mother looking up from the washing, smiled. You and the mountain belong together. How? the little girl asked as she dragged the wet clothes out of the stream and slowly wrung the water out of them. Our mountain is called Mela, which is why I named you Sumela, the little girl's mother told her as she took hold of the heavy washing basket. That means on Mount Mela. It is your destiny to climb the mountain some day. When, mother? When? The little girl asked excitedly. Oh, please let it be soon. When the washing dries, the otia cakes grow cool, and the magic gemenje calls you up the mountain, her mother laughed. Whenever danger is near, it will call to you. The little girl did not understand what her mother told her, but she was a good girl and she went into the barn, fed the cow, and said goodnight to the chickens, before shutting the door and preparing for bed. And as always, before she lay down to sleep, she thanked God for making hers a happy life. That happy life was not destined to continue, however. There came a time when a dreadful war overran the entire land. One day, as the little girl and her mother sat outside their house, they heard loud booming sounds, like thunder barking. It seemed as if they would never stop. The little girl could no longer hear the birds or the sound of the chanting. Looking up, the sky was filled with dark clouds of smoke. From far, far away, the wind brought hints of screaming and wailing to her ears. As time passed, these startling sounds grew closer and closer. Quick, cried the little girl's mother, grabbing hold of her shoulders and pushing her back inside the house. A catastrophe is upon us. We have no time to lose. In her terror, the little girl's mother decided to send her into the forest where none of the enemy could follow her. Put on your coat and come with me, she told the little girl. Her mother put a few cold otia cakes that she had forgotten in the frying pan into her daughter's pocket. Go straight ahead and into the forest, she ordered. Keep going until you can no longer hear any noises and feel safe. Stay there for three days. When the three days are over, come back home to me. I'll be waiting. Surely Mother Mary of the mountain will protect you and the angels will show you the way. And so... She took the little girl to the edge of the forest, gave her a big kiss and an even bigger hug, and sent her on her way.
Now, the little girl had never been in the forest before. Being all alone, she was quite scared. Every step she took, the darker and more menacing it became. The branches whipped at her face and the bramble snatched at her clothes. The rocks tore at her shoes and as she proceeded deeper into the forest, her heart grew heavier. Peering up through the overhanging branches, she noticed that the sky was the color of lead. The light was fading and she could not tell whether the alarming screeching sounds that were growing increasingly more shrill were coming from the eagles or something else. Overcome with dread, the little girl sat down on a mossy rock and buried her face in her palms. She wept piteously. At that moment, the little girl heard a strange sound, faintly at first, beneath her sobs, the wild scratching of the branches, the dull and persistent thud of the cannons, and the horrible shrieking. Then, it grew steadily louder. It was a buzzing sound, like two or three bees humming together, weaving notes in and out of the air and calling to her. Sumela! Sumela! Don't be afraid! Sumela! Sumela! Come up the mountain! All of a sudden, the little girl felt her heart grow lighter. Wiping away her tears and brushing the mud and leaves from her torn coat, she stood up and, turning towards the direction of the music, took courage and began to climb up the mountain. As the sun began to set behind the mountain, the screaming stopped and all was still and heavy. Only the buzzing sounds of the curious music still resonated in the evening breeze, floating around her, enveloping her and pushing her forward. Soon she came to a cliff where there was no more brambles or shark rocks. The moon and the stars were out and in their silvery light she could make out a vast building covered in many windows that, even as the shadows that it cast parted the gloom, looked like the holes in the smile of a grinning old man. Ever so slowly, she walked towards the building. As she reached its heavy wooden door, the little girl noticed that it was ajar and that the vast iron lock had been broken. Darkness beckoned from inside. Instantly, she hesitated. The moonbeams dancing on the wall made her shudder for they were completely covered from floor to ceiling in sombre, elongated figures like the saints and the angels in the icons before which the little girl's mother lovingly lit a lamp every day. Why do their eyes follow you around wherever you go? The little girl had once asked her mother. Because they are always keeping an eye on you and trying to protect you, her mother had answered. These saints had no eyes. There were rows upon rows of saintly and angelic beings suspended on the wall, some holding crosses, others holding palm leaves, or boxes, or books. Yet none of them could see. Someone had scratched them out, and in their place was a hollow, silvery glow. If the saints and the angels could not see her, how could they protect her? The little girl shivered. Suddenly, she felt cold and very afraid. It was then that the buzzing sound grew louder and she heard the notes reverberate around the walls, calling to her louder than ever before. Sumela, Sumela, don't be afraid. Sumela, Sumela, come inside the monastery on the mountain. The little girl walked through the door and felt her way in the darkness until she stumbled upon what felt like a flight of stairs. Again, the buzzing sound circled her ears, whispering, Sumela, Sumela, don't be afraid. Sumela, Sumela, climb up the stairs of the monastery on the mountain. 
Gingerly placing her hand on the wall and using the music as a guide, the little girl climbed and climbed. Whenever she tired of her ascent, she would lay on a step and rest, and it seemed to her then that the buzzing and humming would wrap itself around her like a blanket and keep her warm, and that the notes would gather themselves behind her head like a pillow. Eventually, when it felt to her like she could climb no longer, she came to a door. Light shone from the gap beneath it, and she could see that she was so high now that the bottom of the stairs was shrouded in shadow. Pushing open the door, it creaked open to reveal an old man with an incredibly long white beard sitting before a fireplace. In one of his hands, he held a strange wooden instrument shaped like a long rectangular box with a long neck and three strings. With the other, he dragged a long curved stick across the strings and when he opened his mouth, it was the instrument that spoke in its buzzing, humming, sing-song voice. Good evening, Sumela. Is that really you? I've been expecting you for so long. The old man looked careworn but kind, and all the while he never stopped playing the instrument. Sit down and warm yourself by the fire, the first of the three strings whispered to her. Don't be afraid, don't be afraid. Come up the mountain, the second of the three strings lisped, as if to someone else, unseen. There is food by the stove, take all you need, the last of the strings offered, and the little girl, overcome with fatigue, stretched out by the fire, and immediately fell fast asleep. Early the next morning, when the little girl opened her eyes, she saw the old man sitting beside her, and the sun shining gloriously through the cracks in the shutters. The bow danced off the strings of the instrument, and the old man's eyes sparkled as he smiled. Eat your breakfast, Sumela, and walk through this door. The strings hummed in unison, leading her towards a door behind the fireplace she had not noticed when she arrived the night before. She was not very hungry, but she did not wish to offend the old man, so she dutifully ate from the bowl offered to her and walked towards the door, observing how it was covered in intricate carvings of leaves and fruit and strange creatures with legs of goats. It swung open at her approach. Instantaneously, the little girl found herself in a fragrant meadow. The sun shone warmly and more brightly than she had ever experienced, making the hues of the flower-strewn lawn quiver more vividly than the colourful carpets the little girl's mother had woven at home. A fountain of cool water played in one corner, and as she passed by a group of cherry trees heavily laden with fruit, the sound of the buzzing and humming rhythmically swaying their branches, she came upon the old man, sitting at the foot of a mulberry tree, playing his instrument. All around him, masses of children, boys and girls just like her, skipped, hopped, and jumped to the beat of the music, dancing as they tried to reach the ripe, swollen mulberries hanging over their heads. Sometimes they managed to reach them, and their thick juices would drip onto their faces and stain their cheeks. Sumela! Sumela! One of the three strings whispered, Don't be afraid. Sumela! Sumela! The second of the three echoed, Join the dance. Who are you? The little girl asked in wonder. Her feet began to shuffle and her knees bent as the notes whirled around her on languid wisps of breeze. What is this place? We are the magic Gemenje, and this is the place of safety. Here, no one can be found, no one can be hurt, and all can remain forever and a day, or at least until the eyes of the saints grow back and the angels gather to fly around the mountain again, the last of the strings strummed. With that, the little girl took the hand of the last child in line and began to dance around the mulberry tree. When she grew tired, she slept, for there was no darkness in the fragrant meadow, and night never fell. When she woke up, the old man was by her side, with her breakfast bowl, 
and the little girl reckoned that this was now her second day away from home. On the third day, just as the day before, the children played and pranced around together and the old man sat beneath the mulberry tree playing the kimenje. The sky was bright and the clouds were nowhere to be seen. As they all danced and jumped up to catch the mulberries, the little girl heard the first of the strings whisper to her, Sumela, Sumela, don't be afraid. The second string chanted in turn, Sumela, Sumela, look up at the sky. The little girl blinked and looked up. There were clouds gathering now. In their fluffy curves, she thought she could make out the outline of a veil-covered lady with large, sorrowful eyes. She was smiling at her sadly, with arms outstretched, so vast that they covered the entire expanse of sky. The lady winked, and a single teardrop fell from her eye, landing on the little girl's face with a dull plop. Now you have eagle's eyes, the last of the strings intoned. The little girl could see all the way around and down the mountain. It heaved as if it were alive. Streams of people, like ants, moving one after another, fled from it in the same direction. Their heads bowed, their eyes glistening in fear towards the sea. They boarded boats as buildings burned and smoldered and collapsed around them. And the screams I must go back, the little girl told the old man. Sumela, Sumela, don't be afraid, the first of the three strings answered. Sumela, Sumela, don't leave, stay here where it's safe, the second of the three strings pleaded. But the little girl refused to listen. My mother told me to find my way home after three days, and I must do as my mother tells me, she exclaimed. You must show me the way I came, so that I can go back down the mountain. You cannot go back the way you came, the last of the strings sobbed. There is no going back there. But follow my song, and I will get you home. The old man stood up, and a hollow opened in the tree, which grew larger and larger. Kissing the little girl on the forehead, he watched her step through it. Cocooned in the harmonies of the music, the little girl could not hear the cries and the screams of the people, nor could she be scorched by the fires, pierced by the bullets that whined past her, lacerated by the swords that gleamed about her, or assailed by the pangs of hunger. She could not tell how long it was, but it seemed like it was only moments before that she had stepped through the mulberry tree when she found herself boarding a boat, crowded with terrified, howling people, setting off across a dark, unruly sea. And one morning, as the boat wearily approached a gleaming white tower upon an unknown shore, the music of the Gemenje abruptly stopped. There, on the quay, a small dot on the landscape at first, but then more clearly, in front of the jostling crowd, the little girl's mother came into view, waiting for her with outstretched arms to enfold her in her embrace. The little girl was home. And high up on the mountain, far away, in a land far older than the first telling of the stories that we all know, a polite old man sits at the roots of a mulberry tree, playing his magic gemenje for thousands of mulberry-stained children that dance and will never grow old, until the scratched-out eyes of the saints grow back and the angels gather, their wings fluttering, to take the children back down the mountain 
once more.